Cardiac output is the amount of blood being pumped from one ventricle in one minute. So in terms of a human being surviving, it's a pretty important thing. So we're going to look at the factors affecting cardiac output. But before I even define anything, I want you to see that we have factors nested in factors. So cardiac output is the product of stroke volume and heart rate. So we're going to look at stroke volume and we're going to see what factors affect stroke volume and then what factors affect those factors and so on and so forth. So this first slide, um, when you're done, would be pretty good to come back to so you can recall how things are related to each other. All right, so as I said, cardiac output is the volume of blood being pumped per ventricle per minute, and it's the product of stroke volume and heart rate. Stroke volume is the volume of blood being pumped per ventricle per heartbeat. And heart rate is obviously beats per minute. So if my heart beats 75 times in one minute, and with each beat I'm pumping out 70 milliliters of blood, we know that I pumped 5,250 milliliters of blood out of my heart, which is my cardiac output. So stroke volume is the difference between your end diastolic volume and your end systolic volume. Now remember, diastole is relaxation, systole is contraction. So quite simply, your end diastolic volume is the volume of blood in each ventricle at the end of the relaxation period, right before your heart beats. And sometimes that is used interchangeably with the term preload, which we will get into momentarily. And systolic volume is the volume of blood in each ventricle right after the heart beats. So how much blood is left over? So if I have 100 milliliters of blood in my ventricle at the end of relaxation and my heart beats and there's 30 milliliters of blood remaining, that means that 70 milliliters were ejected from my heart, which is my stroke volume. So before I say anything else, I just want to point out that um, end diastolic volume and preload are often used interchangeably in textbooks. But just so you understand, technically the definition of preload is the degree of stretch in your heart muscle, whereas end diastolic volume is the volume of blood. But the volume of blood is so closely tied to the degree of stretch in the heart muscle because the more volume, the more stretch, that they just use them interchangeably. All right, so if my end diastolic volume goes up, what is going to be the effect on my stroke volume and my cardiac output? So if my end diastolic volume goes up, my stroke volume goes up, my cardiac output goes up. Now this might seem simple, like, you know, more blood, more stroke volume, but there's kind of a deeper physiological reason behind that. Um, so the Frank Starling law of the heart tells us that the greater the degree of stretch in the heart muscle, the greater the force of the contraction because the stretching will bring more actinomycin into contact um, and it's going to increase the force of that contraction. So if a ventricle has more blood, it will contract harder. Um, you might remember learning with skeletal muscle that there is a degree to which you can stretch your muscle that is beyond 
the optimal length for the force of a contraction, but cardiac muscle is prevented from overstretching by the fibrous pericardium sort of preventing it from becoming too large. So end diastolic volume goes up, stroke volume goes up, cardiac output goes up. What would happen if my end systolic volume increased? Is my stroke volume going up or down? So my stroke volume would be going down because if my end systolic volume increases, that means there was more blood in my heart after my heart beat. So that means I must have pumped less blood out of my heart. So the major factor affecting end diastolic volume is venous return. And venous return is exactly what it sounds like. It's the amount of blood returning to the heart. So if my venous return goes up, what happens to my end diastolic volume? It obviously also goes up. More blood returning, more volume at the end of relaxation. So what factors are affecting venous return? So vasoconstriction um, will increase your blood pressure and it will increase venous return therefore helping to maintain cardiac output. Um, when you're exercising, your venous return increases because your muscles actually squeeze on your veins and they're pushing the blood back to your heart. Um, so that's your muscular pump. And then your respiratory pump is just you breathing in and out that in and out motion is pumping the blood vessels in your thorax um, and pushing everything to your heart. Now I want you to think if my heart rate increases, what will happen to my end diastolic volume? Will it increase or decrease? So if my heart rate increases, my end diastolic volume actually decreases because it decreases my venous return because there is less time for ventricular filling. So there's less time for the blood to get in. Therefore, the end diastolic volume would be less. However, that's if all other variables remained the same and literally nothing else happened. Um, but we're going to see in a little bit that when your heart rate goes up, other things do happen, um, which is why an elevated heart rate doesn't typically decrease your cardiac output. Um, only in the case of like a, a really, really, really elevated heart rate um, would your cardiac output end up going down. So before we said if our end systolic volume goes up, cardiac output goes down. So in order to increase our cardiac output, our end systolic volume needs to go down because that means we had less blood in the heart after we contracted, which means we pumped more blood out. So the major thing affecting your end systolic volume is contractility. And that is the force of muscle contraction independent of muscle stretch. So remember before we said if your muscles stretched more, you're going to contract harder. So contractility is when you're contracting harder for literally any reason that's not that. So if our contractility goes up, our end systolic volume goes down, our cardiac output ends up increasing. So things that increase contractility are called positive inotropic agents. 
and negative inotropic agents decrease contractility. So I don't have a whole lot to say about these. That's just what they do. Um, although I do think the negative inotropic agents, the acidosis and the extracellular potassium, I believe those are pathological things, meaning they're not part of your normal homeostatic mechanisms. This would be part of a disease process that's decreasing your contractility. So it's not something your body would be doing intentionally to decrease your contractility. Um, and I also didn't mention that there are certain medications that are negative inotropes, um, which I'm not going to talk about them either because we're just going over the basics here, but they exist. The other thing that affects end systolic volume is afterload. Afterload is the pressure that your heart has to overcome in order to open up the semilunar valves. Um, and in a healthy person, this generally isn't a factor. This is something that comes into play with a person that has high blood pressure. Um, a person that has high blood pressure will have a higher afterload, so their heart needs to beat harder in order to overcome it. Um, so having a high afterload is going to make it harder to empty your heart, and it's going to increase your end systolic volume, therefore decreasing your cardiac output, which not a good thing. So yeah, that's another thing where this is not something that your body is altering in order to adjust your cardiac output. This is a pathological process. So we've talked about everything for stroke volume. Now we're on to heart rate. So we have positive inotropic and negative inotropic, which affects contractility, positive chronotropic and negative chronotropic are to do with heart rate. So to remember the difference, chrono is to do with time, like chronological order. So there are two main things regulating your heart rate. Um, the first is your autonomic nervous system. Remember, you have your parasympathetic and sympathetic divisions. Sympathetic is fight or flight. Parasympathetic is your rest and digest. So sympathetic stimulation is going to increase your heart rate by... So you have fibers directly attached um, to your SA node and the norepinephrine is going to bind to these beta receptors and cause your SA node to depolarize more quickly. And depolarization translates into a heartbeat. If you don't know what I'm talking about right now, that means you need to go back and you need to look at the intrinsic conduction system and you need to look at the action potential of pacemaker cells and then you come back here and that sentence will make sense. Um, your SA node is your pacemaker, um, causing it to depolarize more quickly is going to increase your heart rate. It also, um, now this doesn't have to do with heart rate, but I'm just going to mention while you're here that sympathetic stimulation enhances contractility, so it's a positive inotropic factor that is going to decrease your ESV by strengthening your heart rate. Now parasympathetic, we're going to do the opposite. We're going to slow our hearts down. When you're hanging out, um, your heart is always being influenced by the parasympathetic nervous system saying, chill out, because your SA node is set to a rate of about 100 heartbeats per minute. So the parasympathetic nervous system is always influencing it and telling it to go slower. So 
the parasympathetic nervous system is going to hyperpolarize your SA node by opening potassium channels, bringing it further away from threshold um, because K is exiting the cell. The inside is more negative, which would make the membrane further from threshold. Once again, if you don't know what I'm saying, you need to go back and you need to look at the action potentials of your pacemaker cells. And I will put a video in the description. So autonomic nervous system and the other is chemical regulation um, via your endocrine system. So hormones like thyroxine and epinephrine, they were positive inotropic agents. They are also positive chronotropic agents. Um, and you also need to have normal ion levels for those normal action potentials. If your ion levels are off, it's going to wreak all kinds of havoc with your heart rate. All right, so now we can summarize what we've learned. So remember we said exercise is going to increase our venous return because of our skeletal muscular pump pumping things um, back to the heart. And if we increase our venous return, obviously that means the amount of blood in our heart at the end of contraction will be increased which will increase our stroke volume due to that Frank Starling law of the heart. Now over here, this is um, ventricular filling time being increased is the same as saying that our heart rate decreased, allowing more time for our ventricles to fill up. And following it down, that has the same effect. Then recall, we said that an increase in contractility is what decreases our end systolic volume because our heart was pumping harder. So any of those positive inotropic agents are going to increase our contractility. But let's follow it over here. Um, so this would be hormonal things um, because that's bloodborne, it's traveling through the blood, but then the nervous system also directly affects contractility. Um, so if our heart rate here, like our decreased heart rate, independent of anything else, a decreased heart rate increases cardiac output, but an increased heart rate does not come by itself. Um, so if we have an increase in sympathetic activity, that same thing that increases our contractility is also going to increase our heart rate. Um, and obviously, if our stroke volume is kept the same, if our stroke volume does not go down, and we increase our heart rate, then an increased heart rate, mathematically, we know it's going to increase our cardiac output. All right, I hope that was helpful. If you have any questions or things you would like me to clarify, you can leave a question in the comments and I'll do my best to answer. Have a great day and have fun learning.